Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Northampton City Council meeting of uh, May 21st, 2015. I'm City Councilor Bill Floyd. I'm the president. I'll be presiding. Um, before we convene, we uh, traditionally invite the public to come and speak during public comment. Uh, the rules are you uh, please keep your comments to under three minutes. You're allowed to speak on any topic. Uh, and then also respect the decorum. And also understand that this is your time to speak, uh, not the counselors. You'll, you'll get to talk more than you probably care to listen uh, right after that. But So if you have any questions of the council, we won't be able to answer them at this moment, but we certainly can follow up after. Um, I have no one signed up for public comment, but is anyone interested in speaking? Jasper. Hello, my name is Jasper Lapiensky. I now reside on oh. 43 West Street. And uh, my public comment is, I think that the 15 minute parking signs should specify at what time of night they stop and force it. Uh, that is something that is announced on the meters. And there is a period when they don't enforce it. Um, it would be, I think, interesting for the public to know that. Was that under three minutes? Uh, just by a tick. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else interested in speaking at this time? Crikey. All right. I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Councillor Adams. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Klein. Here. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. Councillor Shera. Here. Councillor Spector. Here. We have not only a quorum, but we have complete attendance. And I'd like to, in, in, in light of that, I also like to uh, thank Councilor Adams to fill in for me as I explored the great state of Indiana. <clears throat> I'm here to report that I'm glad to be home. Um, so, first, I have a couple of public hearing announcements to make. The, the first is the um, uh, and I'll read the language. The following public hearing is hereby advertised in accordance with the Charter of Northampton, Massachusetts, Article 7, Finance and Fiscal Procedures, Section 7, Chapter 4, Action on the Operating Budget, a public hearing. And by order of the City Council, a public hearing to be held on Thursday, June 4th, on tw 2015 at 7.05 here in the City Council Chambers located in the Wallace J. Polchowski Municipal Building, which is where you're actually sitting now, uh, 212 Main Street, Northampton, Mass. The City Council will consider the proposed FY 2016 budget and hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. Also, um, <coughs> we have meetings with the department heads. The Council uh, is conducting hearings over the course of two days. And the, uh, the dates are... May 26, 20, uh, 2015 at 7 p.m. here in the Council Chambers, and then May 27, 20, uh, 2015 at 5 p.m. also in the Council Chambers. The, on uh, Tuesday, we'll be speaking with, at 7 o'clock we have scheduled Central Services, at 7.20 the Department of Public Works, and at 8 p.m. Parks and Recreation. On Wednesday, We'll be speaking at, starting 5 p.m. speaking with the police department at 520 fire and rescue and at 540 the Northampton public school system. And so as I said those hearings will be here and uh, citizens are invited to come and offer their comments and remarks and we will and the council will be uh, discussing the, the budgets of those particular departments. And speaking of which, given the fact that we're referring to a budget that actually has already been released uh, by the mayor on the 15th, the mayor is here, we're up for, at the communications from the mayor, the mayor is here to present his budget formally and officially. Your Honor. Good evening, Councilors. Um, uh, yes, indeed, I, uh, in accordance with the Charter, I submitted the um, budget and I know you have copies of it and um, there's a copy online electronically as well as um, the mayor's office city clerk's office and at Forbes and Lilly library for folks who want to put a put their hands on it um, as is the custom and, and in accordance with the charter I will um, I will deliver the budget message to the city council as part of the um, part of the budget submission 
So to the honorable members of the city council, I submit for your consideration and approval my proposed $103,087,380 fiscal year 2016 budget for the city of Northampton in accordance with section 7-3 of our charter. This rep represents a 1.28% decrease in spending from last year's city budget. The budget is comprised of an $87,903,856 general fund, together with enterprise funds for water, $6,617,188, sewer, $6,074,067, solid waste, $517,593, and stormwater, $1,974,676. This budget also includes a capital improvements budget funding 35 projects totaling $6,337,540 in both general fund and enterprise fund capital projects. In 2013, I presented the City Council and residents of Northampton with a fiscal stability plan designed to conserve a significant portion of the new tax revenue created by the passage of a $2.5 million general override to sustain us in future years. In proposing the override, I promised the City Council and taxpayers that we would revisit the plan each year to measure our progress and would work hard every day in between to stretch revenues further in order to stave off budget cuts and avoid another override. That original plan initiated in the FY 2014 budget charted a reasonable growth course for revenues and expenditures, allowing us to maintain and invest in city and school services by building up a fiscal sustainability reserve fund in FY 2014, FY 2015, FY 2016, and then draw from that fund in FY 2017 to balance our budget before facing a shortfall again in FY 2018. We revisited the plan as part of the FY 2015, the current budget, and I was excited to announce as part of that budget message that our continued stewardship had paid significant dividends in allowing us to extend Northampton's fiscal stability plan by an additional two years to FY 2020. I am pleased to say that our progress remains positive and that if adopted, this proposed FY 2016 budget will allow us to once again revise and extend our city's fiscal stability plan by an additional year to FY 2021. The updated general fund fiscal stability plan chart attached to this budget message calls for budgeting a portion of our tax revenues in the fiscal stability stabilization fund in FY 2016, 2017, and 2018, and then drawing them down over FY 2019, 2020, and 2021 to balance our budgets while maintaining city and school services. Under this revised multi-year budget trajectory, we will deplete the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund by FY 2022 and could once again be faced with staffing and service cuts. We accept that as both a caution and a challenge and keep working every day to further prolong this period of fiscal stability and positive forward progress for our community. The proposed FY 2016 general fund budget which funds municipal and school operations, represents a 1.98% increase from fiscal year 2015. This increase, which is slightly lower than the budgeted increase for FY 2015, represents increases in negotiated wages and benefits, operating costs, and some departmental staffing changes. The five largest areas of increase in the FY 2016 general fund budget are, number one, education. Funding for Northampton's two school districts is our single largest spending category and would increase in this budget by $936,880. This includes a $780,354 increase for the Northampton Public Schools and an increase of $156,526 for Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. The City's funding commitment to SVAH SVAHS is actually increasing by 211,821, but the overall budget increase appears lower because of a, de a decrease in the state tuition rate that has lowered the school's revenues from sending communities. The financial and organizational structure of Smith Vocational presents unique challenges for the city, 
and is the subject of a new UMass Donahue <coughs> Institute study commissioned by the Mass Department of Ele Elementary and Secondary Education, which is available on our website. Number two, retirement. Our annual appropriation is determined by the Northampton Retirement Board's updated actuarial funding schedule approved by PIRAC. These actuarial studies are performed at least once every two years in order to recalibrate the funding schedule to ensure full funding by a certain year. The newest mortality tables necessitated an increase of $400,052, or 8.4%, in the city's retirement assessment for FY 2016 to a total of $5,166,378. The current funding schedule has our retirement system reaching full funding by FY 2036. Police. The police department budget would see an increase of $333,420 under this proposed budget. This is primarily attributable to negotiated salary increases as part of an FY 2015-2016 collective bargaining agreement with our patrol union reached at the beginning of this year. It also reflects our decision to increase NPD's budget from funding three cruiser replacement units each year to four. This fourth replacement cruiser was previously funded via the Capital Improvement Program, but we believe this equipment is so integral to the department's day-to-day -day work that it should be fully funded in their annual operations budget. We've made a similar budgetary change with regard to replacement ambulances for our fire rescue department. Number four, charter school tuition. Tuition for Northampton students who attend area charter schools will increase $330,911, or 14%, in FY 2016, for a total expenditure of almost $2.7 million. Unfortunately, both the governor and legislature once again did not fully fund statutory charter school reimbursement formulas to cities and towns designed to help cushion the impact of this significant funding loss by public school districts. By not fully funding this state budget line item, North Northampton got shortchanged $139,529 in FY 2014, $136,542 in FY 2015, and a projected $273,309 in FY 2016 for a total of $549,380 over the last three years. DPW Streets Division. The safety and efficiency of our city's streets, roads, sidewalks, and other public ways remains among my top priorities as mayor. The work of our DPW Streets Division has a major impact on resident quality of life, whether through winter snow removal, street paving projects, crosswalk enhancement, and traffic calming, or our current war on potholes. My proposed budget increases my proposed budget increases DPW Streets Division funding by $206,815, of which $41,650 is allocated to its snow and ice account, and $165,165 is allocated to the general highway maintenance budget to further support these critical activities. The FY 2016 Enterprise Fund budgets for water, sewer, solid waste, and stormwater reflect a 19.5% reduction in spending from last year's city budget. This is largely attributable to one-time FY 2015 appropriations for large capital projects in both the water and solid waste enterprise funds, the latter specifically related to the closure of our sanitary landfill on Glendale Road. Proposed spending in the sewer enterprise fund is reduced by 2.6%, and the stormwater enterprise fund remains largely static with just a slight 0.3% reduction from last year. Finally, indirect costs paid to the general fund from the enterprise funds will go down 2.1% as part of this budget. The amount of state aid received by the city of Northampton continues to pose significant challenges. While I commend Governor Baker for putting forth a 3.6% increase in unrestricted general government aid, or UGA, to cities and towns, net state aid to Northampton will actually decrease by 1.1%, or $109,956, under the FY 2016 state budget currently pending on Beacon Hill. This reduction is due largely to the aforementioned charter school funding issues, together with a continued lack of realistic growth in Chapter 70 education aid for the Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vocational. 
Total state aid now re represents just 18.9% of the revenue in the proposed FY 2016 budget. Ten years ago, state aid made up 25% of Northampton's FY 2006 budget. This decrease in revenue has created increased pressure on property taxes, which now represent over 64% of our total FY 2016 budget revenue. This growing reliance on property taxes to fund tight municipal budgets has called attention in Massachusetts, like many other parts of the country, to the need for cities and towns to fully explore payment in lieu of tax or pilot programs for their largest tax-exempt property owners. The city of Boston, home to a considerable number of tax-exempt properties, has instituted a pilot program where educational, medical, and cultural institutions with property holdings over 15 million are asked to voluntarily pay 25% of what their tax bill would be. This percentage was arrived at to represent that portion of the city's overall expenditures devoted to police, fire, and public works, services that those institutions both consume and benefit from. The pilot payments were phased in over five years, and up to half of the payments can be credited for in-kind services that directly benefit the City of Boston. In FY 2014, Boston received $25.9 million in voluntary pilot contributions, representing almost 75% of the total amount it had requested from 49 institutions. Representative Steve Kulik of Worthington has introduced state legislation, House Bill 2584, based on the Boston model that would require tax-exempt organizations to make payment in lieu of tax payments, quote, equal to 25% of the amount that would be paid if the property were not exempt from taxation, unquote, in cities and towns that accept the law and develop local regulations to facilitate it. I strongly support this legislation, as does the Mass Municipal Association. The FY 2016 budget I'm submitting today includes $125,000 in revenue generated from existing pilot agreements between the City of Northampton and several tax-exempt institutions. I believe we must expand both the number and scope of pilot agreements with our largest tax-exempt institutions to help fund critical city services and ensure our long-term fiscal stability. I have already begun discussions with some of the leaders of these institutions and will make it my goal to increase payment in lieu of tax revenues between now and the creation of next year's FY 2017 fiscal budget. I want and need the City Council's full support in this important pilot effort, as well as the support of City residents. I will formally report to the City Council on my progress to date on or before October 1, 2015. I will also submit at that time a detailed proposal for a Northampton payment in lieu of tax pilot program and request the City Council's review and endorsement. In closing, I want to thank our city departments and school administrations for their respective contributions to this overall budget document. Thanks as always to our finance director, Susan Wright, for her work on this budget and her outstanding day-to-day -day leadership of our financial team. Thank you as well to my Chief of Staff, Lynn Simmons, Executive Assistant Cindy Murphy, and Mayoral Assistant Megan McNally for all of their help and assistance on this document. I look forward to working with the City Council over the next several weeks to answer any questions about this budget or provide additional information it may need. And again, copies of the budget document are available for residents to review at our two libraries and at City Hall, as well as electronically on the City of Northampton website www.northamptonma.gov. Respectfully submitted, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, do you have any other follow-up comments? I did have one other communication, sort of a, uh, a late-breaking uh, communication. Um, and I just going to pass out a copy of it. Um, as the council may know, we came to the council a little bit earlier in the capital process to, um, to ask that uh, we uh, get bonding authority for several of the large projects that we wanted to get out to bond early on. Um, and as part of that process, we needed to go through the, um, uh, the, the fund rating process with our, um, with, our, with our financial team that helps us with the bonding process. So we had a rating call with Standard & Poor's last week. 
um, and as part of the upcoming uh, bond issuance that we'll be doing um, yesterday late late yesterday Standard & Poor's um, did release a uh, new bond rating for the city of Northampton um, and I'm very pleased to say that uh, that they have affirmed our AA plus long-term rating and stable outlook uh, and um, they've give a quick synopsis of our very strong economy uh, with access to a broad and diverse metropolitan statistical area, strong management with good financial policies, strong budgetary performance with operating surpluses in the general fund and at the total governmental fund level, very strong budgetary flexibility, uh, very strong liquidity, very strong debt and contingent liability uh, position, and strong institutional framework score. Um, it's uh, read through it. You, it gives, I think, a, a really good assessment. Um, I'm also pleased that there's mention of the, uh, of the fiscal stability plan that we have put in place and the recognition that, uh, that the city is taking a multi-year approach um, to how it uh, builds its city budgets. Um, and also that we've continued to rebuild our uh, reserve accounts uh, because as we've talked about before, the reserve position of a city or town um, is critical to uh, maintaining a strong bond rating. Um, there's also a mention of, of our other than post-employee benefit um, liability. That's been mentioned in previous ones in sort of a very, you know, passing way. Um, uh, but there's uh, a little bit more um, uh, uh, verbiage related to that. Um, and again, they acknowledge the fact that, uh, that we have a um, that we have a, that our OPEB costs are manageable at this time, and they also acknowledge that we've um, begun to to build an OPEB trust fund as well. So I wanted to submit that to you. I think the timing is uh, is great in terms of the budget because a lot of the things that we t I talked about in the budget message and that we're trying to do in, in this budget and in previous budget, um, I think, are affirmed by um, our continued strong rating. So that was my other communication. Um. Well, uh, plaudits to you. That I actually, it's the, uh, this is refreshing to see as well, and reinforces actually our investment of uh, confidence in, in the way that uh, your administration is managing the budget. So, um, and in the days to come, we'll analyze that. We'll get a little more granular with that, and publicly have an opportunity to participate in that discussion as well. Um, Next up, we have uh, one-minute announcements. Anyone, any councilors, uh, Council LaBarge? Yeah, the three of us. Yeah. Um, the food bank, um, a healthy eating and living, a free nutrition workshop, which will be held June 1st, 2015, from 1.30 to 2.30. We're at the Northampton Senior Center. and. Um, Heather Kellalane is saying to contact her if you have any questions. It is, and her phone number is 587-1307. And you can learn about good nutrition and get tips from the nutrition team at the food bank. Okay. Uh, Councilor Klein? I've got three. You know, it's okay, you're, you're allowed. Um, so the first one is about uh, the Hotel Bridge in Leeds, which is the oldest um, truss bridge, wrought iron truss bridge in Massachusetts. Um, the Leeds Civic Association and a group of folks um, working with them are trying to find the funds to have it restored, recognized first of all by the Massachusetts Historical Association and then the National Historical Association. Um, it was evaluated by a company called Working Bridges, and the project manager is coming on June 1st to an open meeting for the whole community to come and learn about the prospects for restoring the bridge. So Monday, June 1st, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. in the Leeds Elementary School cafeteria. Um, at 1 o'clock in Leeds on Memor uh, the Sunday before Memorial Day, this coming Sunday, the date being the 24th. 24th. The 24th, uh, there is a memorial service <coughs> the Leeds <coughs> that the Leeds Civic Association puts together um, every year. And the last thing is the there's a fundraiser for the Senior Center. It's a shred day. 
um, on Saturday, June 6th from 9 to 12 uh, at 67 Con Street at the Senior Center. $5 per bag or box for the shredding of your documents and all of the proceeds will benefit the programs and serv services of the Senior Center. Another Senior Center event on Thursday, June 18th from 10 to noon, there will be a hot towel shave. And this will be shaves done with a single edge razor by uh, the master barber from the barber shop in Chicopee. And after that, there will be a barbecue. That's, <laughs> that's coincidental. <laughs> that's Thursday, June 18th from 10 a.m. to noon. Thank you, Councilor Barnes, for sharing this with me. Sweeney Todd thing. Councilor O'Donnell, any announcements? No. Anyone else? Um, the memorial. Yes. Oh, Council Murphy. Oh no, we were just going to do it. Okay. The Memorial Day Parade will be uh, stepping off at 10 a.m. on Monday, at, starting at Trinity Road Park in um, in Florence, and we'll do our regular route, which usually involves us walking twice around the same block. <laughs> this is well, we, 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 we snake and, and we eventually catch up with ourselves. Time. Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, Ten. step off time, but uh, for assembly, they're requesting that we get there between by 9 o'clock. Um, Councilor. Okay, yes, Councilor. Would you make sure that the banner comes to? I will I will bring the banner in the in the pole that holds the banner and we Thank will you. be well represented. Otherwise, people have no idea what we're doing in the parade. They just said it. You know who we are. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, uh, next up we have a, a resolution regarding the acceptance of deeds and easements surrounding Village Hill. Um, I would ask uh, for recognition of um, planner uh, Carolyn Mish. So moved. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Carolyn, would you um, come up and I'll, I'll read this while you make your way to the podium. This is uh, resolved that the Northampton trans this is by the way upon recommendation of the mayor and the office of planning and sustainability. Uh, whereas the Northampton Transportation Plan adopted in 2005 by the Transportation Parking Commission Planning Board, Board of Public Works and City Council recommends a multi-use trail, parenthetically bicycle path connecting the Manhattan Rail Trail on Earl Street with the north campus of Village Hill using a route up the east side of the village and then serving the village, close parentheses. And whereas the City Council authorized the mayor to accept deeds and easements for such trails on December 3rd, 2009, and whereas the master plan developed by mass development and approved by the planning board for build out of a mixed use development at village hill includes a network of north south and east west bicycle and pedestrian paths to connect the uh, village hill bicycle path and whereas development is proceeded that includes the construction of these path networks that will ultimately be completed to create an integrated bicycle pedestrian network tied to the overall citywide system and whereas some of these links will cross private property that will not be owned by the city, and the property owners have offered to grant easements to the, uh, for the public use uh, to these bicycle and pedestrian connections to be integrated into the public network. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Nor uh, Northampton City Council authorizes the mayor to accept deeds and easements with conditions determined by the mayor as may be beneficial for the city for said multi-use paths within and surrounding Village Hill and immediately adjoining areas subject to such terms and conditions agreed to by the mayor. Uh, and Carolyn's here to break that down for us. <laughs> um, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll accept the motion first. To put the motion. And is there a second? Okay. Hit it. Uh, so we attached to this is, um, ex um, is a previous resolution that was probably a little bit uh, more general about connecting the Earl Street path to Village Hill. And um, up on Village Hill, there are a series of interconnecting cross um, connections of bike paths that in order to ensure that those um, be included as um, in this resolution, the city solicitor felt that we should come back to you all to request a similar um, resolution that was um, a adopted in 2009 to make sure that we get all the little pieces of that network just on Village Hill to be accepted as well that connect into the main network. So that's why we're 
back here in front of you. It's not really a duplication. It's just to tie up those loose ends, so to speak. There will be a few that cross um, these, these path networks that um, are conceptually shown in the map that was also attached to the resolution um, that um, will come across private property. So there are um, obligations or um, um, designations by the property owners to grant public easements um, across private property to make those connections into one you know, um, network. Any questions? And no questions? Uh, and just sorry to add one other thing. There's w the um, although this um, resolution would affect other little pieces that might come forward as we s start to close out and finish this project. Um, there is one in particular that's um, pending that the the easement actually is part of closing out one of the projects um, for a multifamily development up there. So the the um, applicant or the developer has asked if it would be possible to um, uh, suspend rules and, and do this in two readings, if you felt comfortable in doing that since we already had sort of the basic foundation for the resolution in 2009. Um, so I put that out there as well. And let me clarify, there's no adverse takings associated with this. No. These are all by agreement. Right. And that um, the, the, the Com the compelling reason for uh, uh, two readings tonight is that there are pending easements that are already sort of in suspension. Now and that right, are benefit, you know. right. And we just wanted to make sure that legally we were covered by coming back to you with this resolution. Um, and so obviously that takes a little bit of time to come through you all. Right. Councilors, any questions about that? Yes. Yes, well, Council Thank you. Carolyn, um, Reading this, it says some of these links will cross private property, which you just talked about, and that this will not be owned by the city. So I just want to get it understood. You're talking about private property, but they are going to give the city the easement. We won't, Who's going to be responsible for any injuries or anything like that? So um, there are pretty clear established... Um, um, statutory allowances for pub uh, for pathways and easements for the public to use pathways that don't burden the actual underlying property owner with any okay. responsibilities. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, this is a resolution, mm -hmm. um, but I think a roll call vote would be appropriate. So, just a point of order. Record. Do we take two readings on resolutions? Is that a normal process? Yeah. We do. Okay. Um, so is everyone okay with the vote? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Adams? Yes. Passes unanimously in the first reading. I'll accept a motion to suspend rules. Suspend rule 14. A uh, second. Okay. A motion has been made in the second to suspend the rules to so allow for a second reading tonight. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll Move accept second reading. Second. Second reading is moved. Roll call, please. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. That passes unanimously in second reading, so the resolution is passed. Next up, we have a presentation. Um, uh, if you've been following the news about uh, the dog park that doesn't exist, uh, there was actually another dimension to that discussion of the land uh, that is leased to Smith Vocational up on Village Hill. It seemed to be that's where we're staying, keeping our conversation focused tonight. And a presentation that I personally think got lost in the mix, unfortunately, and we'll have an opportunity to hear more about it. Uh, composting proposal. Presenters are uh, Jonathan Goldman and Diane Riddle, and you're welcome to come up. I, I'd like to also point out that Jonathan is co chair of the Northampton Youth Commission. This is the back copy of uh, our total business plan, and then here is a summary. 
uh, Thank you. with you as well. Uh, so we'll just start by introducing ourselves. My name is Jonathan Goldman. I am a senior at the Northampton High School. I am also, as Bill Dwight mentioned, uh, involved with the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission and various other things throughout Northampton. Uh, since last June, uh, I approached Bill Dwight about the, the possibility of bringing composting back to Northampton after it died out several years ago. Uh, and since then, I've been putting a lot of time and effort into figuring out this, and I've also been working along with Diana Riddle in creating a concept of how we can bring composting to Northampton what that will mean logistically, cost-wise, uh, who would be the involved parties, and the actual logistics of composting, food waste, uh, and organic waste from the farm. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Diana Riddle. I'm a volunteer on the Solid Waste Action Education Reuse Committee for the city. Um, I'm a resident in Ward 5, and just been following Jonathan's lead on this, really. So we'll s uh, Try right click. Either click. Go to the bottom. I don't see the cursor. It's not working. <laughs> it's like cursor. the server is not working either, so it's not just the you. The server is working now. Is it? Yeah. Oh, hello. Nope. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm connected to the Northampton Public. Not the Wi Fi, but the server for the oh. Oh. Northampton yeah. City site. Oh. It's not oh. working. You can't. Yeah, you can. I went to that too. I don't know. Bill. Now it's loading. Okay. So uh, everything we're going to go over, we've compiled it into a pretty lengthy report that I think has been emailed to all of you. If not, feel free to contact me. We have a contact information at the end. We'd love to send that to you. Um, the beginning portion of it is really the logistics and putting everything together. And the second part are resources for the, resources for the city um, and also actually having the operation uh, come together as well. So. Um, so there are a bunch of different ways that it could happen. Um, it could be a program that Smith Vocational runs exclusively, or it could be a program that the city runs. Um, the Smith Vocational makes sense because it's an educational facility, it has an agricultural component, and it also has a vocational business aspect to it. The city, it, it would make sense for the city to run it because of the sustainability program, the waste management. Um, and to combine it would be really the ideal situation, I think, to have everybody on board working together. Or it could be a privately run um, facility that works cooperatively with community and the m municipality. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, so the idea, um, if any of you guys are unfamiliar of where this is exactly, uh, the, the dog park area right across from there, there's that greenhouse that now is missing. Uh, the covering over it. That is where Smith Oak used to have a composting operation. There are still some windrows there that you can see if you go by. That's just the food waste uh, and other things that are mixed together to turn into compost. So the main focuses of this operation, what would be happening is there would be uh, organics reception, which is the food waste coming in, uh, also waste coming from farms, uh, and that would involve haulers bringing that in from the various farms, from the schools. That would also be beneficial to uh, the city. Uh, the actual composting would also be happening on site as well as the selling of that compost as a product back to farms, uh, our community gardeners, uh, other home gardeners, landscapers, and then the last focus would be an educational component and this is something that we think would be very unique about this operation and we recognize from the beginning that educating the public and putting together a strong education program along with composting is what actually makes it successful. You have uh, fewer incidences of non-organic waste being in the waste stream, which makes it a higher quality product if you don't have those things that can't be composted. And through all our analysis, talking with haulers, talking with other composters in the area, such as Bill Bear, um, uh, Cam Weimer, we've also talked uh, all across the state and even uh, some in the Midwest as well, what we found is that this would end up breaking even the investment into it in the second or third year if there were no uh, uh, donations or grants that were coming from the state, which there are a lot of options and availability for, and that in an average year, this operation would be able to make somewhere around $120,000. You go to the next slide. Uh, so this is just a general breakdown of, of those three parts there. The organics reception, uh, we're looking at around a $35 
uh, per ton tipping fee. Um, that's definitely competitive versus other composting operations as well as general tipping fees uh, for landfills. This is a pretty general trend for all composting operations that they are normally less expensive uh, and it also is a good incentive and can end up saving uh, whoever is then having their waste brought there. Uh, and then for composting, the actual product that's going to be sold, it would be $30 per ton. Uh, this, the, the tonnage would more likely be going to farms that are asking for large loads. Otherwise, um, there would be a slightly reduced price for people who are just coming by to pick up something maybe for their, for their flowers in the front garden um, or any other thing. And the educational aspect of it would be that any restaurant, uh, business, establishment that's including schools and other areas that are part of this, um, they would go through a very short 10 to 15 minute um, educational run through that's basically providing them with resources to tell them what can and cannot be composted and then also um, answering any questions, making them understand that really composting is the same as anything else. It's just it's putting it in a different bin. And then the main costs are going towards the startup equipment, um, a windrow turner or a front end loader, and then also the general registration, the permitting. Um, but it's relatively simple. Composting happens naturally in, the, um, in nature, and this is really just controlling that um, and providing that for the community. You the next slide, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a commercial w food waste ban that went into effect in October of 2014, um, and that seems to be a growing trend. Vermont has already had that established, and there, the food waste ban that Massachusetts passed only refers to very large um, generators at the moment. Vermont started that way, and they've been working their way down and plan to outlaw the disposal of food waste um, broadly in the future. This is also another inspiration for us sort of figuring out that um, we see this trend. We're in Northampton. We are, we, this is something we're capable of doing. We should take advantage of this. We should be become prepared um, and try and move towards that direction. And obviously now there's increasing uh, interest and also funding. There are uh, source, uh, source separated uh, organics grants. Um, and also there are a lot of resources like Recycling Works that are reaching out to increase uh, general composting. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know just about the general Smith of Oak composting operation that used to be happening over on Birch Pit Road. Uh, it went from 1991 to 2004. They actually had a pretty huge participation, about 70 waste generators, uh, 20 farms, and they also had several of the schools involved. Um, they were bringing in around 24 tons of uh, waste per week. Um, that's pretty impressive, especially for that location. Uh, it ended up ending, ending because of management um, and other issues. but. Uh, it's a decade later now, and it definitely seems like something that we could bring back there, especially with the recent discussions regarding composting. Um, the only composting thing we really have in Northampton is happening at the transfer station. There's a drop-off there, but one of the reasons why we really think that needs to be addressed is most of that is being hauled very far away, often to Martin's Farm, um, which is 20 miles or more away, and that's another impact on the environment uh, and also isn't keeping the business and everything here in Northampton. Uh, so so the, mo these are mostly different groups that we've gone over so far. Um, there's a huge interest from the haulers, the main uh, parties that would be involved, Triple T Trucking, Recycling, or uh, Alternative Recycling, uh, and uh, Do So Trucking. Those would be the three main, we've talked with all of them, they all are very interested. They have uh, programs in place if more people want to compost. Um, We've also, there's a lot of interest from restaurants. It's also been noted in the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's report from, I think it was 2008, which was a comprehensive composting review of the entire Pioneer Valley. Um, and then there's also just businesses, establishments. We've talked with uh, the entire Northampton School District um, and sort of figuring out how can we bring it there as well. Um, we've talked with community gardens. There's also interest there. And we have a lot of support coming from uh, the Department of Agricultural Resources and also the Department of Ad, uh, Environmental Protection is just sort of figuring out how to work with them to implement this. And our main reason for coming here to talk with, yeah, you can go to the next one. Uh, our main reason for coming here to talk with all of you is because you guys are really the people who can help push something, also getting this word out to the general public. We think this is ready uh, to really have something pushed along. Um, there are a lot of things that the city council or departments can do, whether that is finding funding um, or passing regulations, uh, passing something that's stricter than the state level, and also providing more education. Um, the resources that would need to go into this, uh, whether that's people helping other people to figure out those uh, problems or putting together a task force, um, or just generally seeing who is the right person to take this on. Should it be the city? Uh, should it be one of the schools? Or should it end up 
falling on someone who's interested in coming in. Um, you go to the last slide. So if any of you guys are interested in finding out any more information, uh, any questions, anything uh, about the financials, anything like that, feel free uh, to email either of us, ask us any questions. Um, this is something we've both spent about a year working on. We're really passionate about it, um, and we'd love to see it really go somewhere because we think we think it's it's Northampton's time to bring this bring this back after a decade. Thank you. Um, any questions, uh, Council Sheriff? Yes. I assume you've also spoken to Pedal people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because they, I mean, I know they for my family, and I know a lot of the people there are the people who haul my compost to the transfer station. So. Would they be interested in participating? Yeah, they were. Um, they are actually one of the first parties that we talked to. Um, they are interested in participating. That's actually one of the reasons why Dusso is interested. Um, one of the problems with food waste, obviously, it weighs a lot. Um, and the first bit road, there's the hills coming coming from Northampton. Um, so we've discussed the possibility of maybe having Dusso almost as like a drop-off place. They can bring it there, and Dusso could bring it um, over to us. So. It, put a lot less of a burden on pedal people and also pedal people could be a lot more involved. We really want to have it be a localized um, Northampton invested uh, cooperative program um, if, if this ends up sort of moving forwards and something comes out of it in Northampton. And would you still, so would the transfer station composting just be kind of be folded in or? It would just be processed it would be at the site yeah. that's okay. local because right. now it's being hauled. Right, it's being out hauled out. away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Councilor Klein. First of all, thanks so much, Jonathan and Diana, for this. This is um, great research you've done and a really important direction that I think the city needs to move in. So I really commend you and thank you. Um, I have four questions. They're all pretty short, so I'm just going to shoot them at you and you can handle them as you see fit. Um, you mentioned costs. I'm wondering about a cost of staffing, some kind of staffing that might need to happen that I wonder if you've taken that into account. Um, and you mentioned the possibility of Smith Folk, and I'm just wondering if they did it for so many years in the past, what what did kind of break down and what would they need to actually be able to support this? Um, you know, why, if it stopped working for them, would it work this time? Um, I'm wondering, what about rodents and wildlife and what kinds of provisions need to be made around that and what might be the costs associated with that? And the last thing is, if you looked at all into anaerobic digestion as an alternative, because that's also a way of creating energy and um, we have some mechanisms already to do that in Northampton, but wondering, it, it clearly needs to be upgraded and all kinds of things, but that's something that a lot of cities are working on that has been really um, a, a powerful thing for a city. So. Those are the things okay, I'd like to know. Uh, okay, so how, how we, we'll start with the, the general employment people who do staffing. Um, in general, I mean, you can have composting, Amend Organics, that's in Amherst, it's run by Cam Weimer. He is one man, one man doing it, um, and he brings in all the food waste from uh, Amherst College. He's also brought in things from other places as well, and he's done it all by himself while having two other jobs. Uh, so it can be done by one person, or there's also places like Martin's Farm that can have a lot more. Um, and we, we plotted out a few different um, ways that this could play out. Um, we didn't include those too extensively because that would really end up depending on who is the person who is overseeing that. Because if it's private, uh, most of that money would be going directly towards them, split 50-50, and some amount also obviously left over to invest back into it. Um, otherwise, if it was done by a city, maybe you'd have uh, a part-time or full-time uh, paid employee and then take in those different rates. So. Um, it really depends on how much investment is putting in, put into it, um, but it's it's a, a very minimalistic thing that can be done. There are a lot of operations all across the country that are done one, maybe two people. Um, it's really just the business part that sometimes needs to be seen by another person. Uh, and can you say what the problems <laughs> that occurred? Oh, yeah. The next question was about the problems that occurred when Smith Oak was running the program before. One of them, one of the major ones, was contamination and the the plastics and things that would be thrown in. And I think they missed an opportunity to do extensive education with generators. So, like a a worker in a restaurant might throw a plastic glove into the into the bin, and then nobody wants that in their finished product. And it's difficult to sort it out after it's already been in there. So that key component of the education, the one-on-one, -on -one, and the, the checking over of what you're getting in on a regular basis. And as can be seen, being a decade later, um, having this legislation going through on the state level and also having these discussions like this, it's, it's a more common 
known thing, composting that understanding as well. Um, so we're in a much different position there. Uh, and then there's also the fact that when they had that operation running there, um, it was a completely different entity from Smith Vogue. It was staffed by them um, and it was a little difficult because they were trying to do that while also doing their educational component um, and they had some trouble trying to figure out how that should exactly be managed. Um, and it wasn't well integrated into the curriculum which it yeah. really could be. And yeah. um, they also felt it was a little too profit driven there. Mm -hmm. They grew too fast and they weren't focused enough on the whole process. Which also shows that there is a huge potential there for, for food waste. The fact, I mean, 24 24 tons per week is, is a lot of food waste for a composting operation. Um, I think that's that's very similar to, to large ones in um, Vermont as well. And then you also mentioned um, about the anaerobic digester. Right. right. Mm. Yes. Rodents and wildlife oh, right. and that oh, right. kind of yeah. the issues. Um, do you, so I'll talk about the rodents and wildlife. You can talk about the digester. Um, so, uh, we, so we've talked with uh, Barbara Hobson. She's sort of this area's person for MDAR. Uh, the Department of Agricultural Resources information, um, and just sort of general what's at that site, what would what are the precautions that would need to be taken. Um, in just an environmental point of view, um, there is this stream that is downhill from there, but uh, when Smith Vogue uh, had composting going on there, it never ended up posing a problem, um, and we actually uh, have taken that into account of how we can design the windrows and have that set up so there is less um, nitrogen and nutrients going into the water that would contaminate it. Um, and then re uh, regarding to animals, general things like that, um, we've talked with this really awesome company called Resource Management Inc. Uh, they're out of um, New Hampshire or Vermont, and they've been ver working with Vermont uh, Composting, a very uh, respected, huge composting operation. Um, I think he's also going to be working with Bill Bear. And it's this really simple wood ash that apparently works really well at basically eliminating odors and also taking away uh, possible potential uh, dangerous uh, herbicides or pesticides that could be in along with the food waste or farm waste. Um, so using that along with sort of, sort of general composting uh, ethics and ideas of making sure you're constantly turning it, you have high carbon in there, uh, that addresses those different problems. And there was one. digesters, it's an expensive uh, startup on an anaerobic right. digester right. and it, it's a possibility in the future. Um, the city, when we spoke to the city services, they were not that interested in having it situated out at where the old landfill site. That's a possibility still in my mind, um, but it would need some public education and some assurances that the odors were under control. Um, uh, so it, it's a possibility. The windrows are effective and they, they make a good quality product. You don't get as good a quality product out of an anaerobic digester, mm -hmm. but you do get the energy. So. Councilor Kern. Yes, this is actually uh, somewhat connected to Councilor question about uh, wildlife, I guess. So the spot, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is Sunset Hill? So it's uh, that hill that is maybe Councillor Dwight. So directly across from the dog park, yeah. so with that hill on the other side of the road? There's a drumlin there. And it's yes. At the bottom of the drumlin. Okay. Yeah. And the reason I bring up that drumlin is uh, that spot, also known to m many people as Sunset Hill, okay. is the premier location for watching nighthawk migration <laughs> which happens you know one once a year probably around the beginning of September but it's known to bird watchers all across Western Mass and there are you know droves that come for that short period of time and so um, I would just encourage you if you are looking at that location that somehow there be at least some sort of coordination so that that opportunity that's there right now for um, Western Mass bird watchers to be able to see it really is a um, remarkable spot for that particular migration. I mean, we're talking many tens, tens and tens of thousands of, of nighthawks that come through at that at that time. That somehow there be um, just an understanding of that phenomenon, and maybe a coordination with. You could probably even just check with, there's even a fest Facebook page for Western Mass Bird Watchers, or just get in touch with someone. I'm happy to try to talk to you about it at some yeah. point to just know. I'm sorry. I don't think it would be necessary to disturb any more land than is already being, um, they're already using that spot at, that we're talking about. 
Smith Vocational is already making windrows, and they just store their manure there until they spread it. They don't really compost, as far as I understand. Okay. But there, it's a flatter area at the bottom of that drumlin. Right. It's, okay. It's so already been disturbed. Be a so. restriction for right now is kind of a mm, not an. Uh, it's kind of a non-official use, but people do yeah, yeah, people yeah. do no, use that spot for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank Just a sir. comment then. Yeah. Council Rodon. Well, also, thank you for the, the presentation. It's clear how much effort you, you've put into this, and um, you call it a business plan, but in a way, that's it's almost too modest because you're really presenting a, a, a vision for something I think the city could really use, so thank you. Um, my question is, I, I hope this is not too peripheral, but you, you mentioned the state um, commercial food waste uh, disposal ban, and you mentioned a, a kind of a cutoff, and so I'm wondering, are we talking about only very, very large producers of commercial waste, um, food waste being subject to this? Are the restaurants downtown, for example, subject to it? And if they're not, could your project kind of facilitate, could that be an avenue for local food waste producers commercially to dispose of their food waste uh, properly for compost? My favorite way of putting it into perspective is that um, the estimated number of places that are going to be affected by this, I think you can even now like put in your business name and it'll tell you if you're going to be affected. Um, but it's between 1,000 to 1,700 places that will be affected. In Northampton alone, we have over 100 places that are food producing. Um, and if we look at that on a state level, then that's pretty minimal that it's only 1,000 to 1,700, especially since um, I think every single hospital, uh, all uh, major universities that are producing large amounts of food waste, all of those end up being under there. Uh, and then you're looking at a very, very small number of restaurants that are going to be affected by it. Um, I believe the number is either, I think it's one ton per week of food waste. Okay. Um, and it's not, it doesn't necessarily then need to be composted. It could also be put uh, into a food reuse center. Um, that's pretty rare across Northampton or across Massachusetts. Um, and this also provides a lot more opportunities for just general commercial business um, in Northampton as well. Thanks. Council LaBarge. Um, you mentioned something to the effect about odor that it produces, and you talked about the landfill possibly of looking at that site just to be aware that because of the problems and the difficulties we had at that landfill, right. there was a nuisance order an odor smell, okay, which was a huge lawsuit by residents. If you're thinking of doing something like that, as a counselor on that ward and who's gone through for several years of having problems there, you're looking at intensive open public hearings with all the abutters around that landfill. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I mentioned it partly because I wanted to wanted you to know that we have looked at that and we were aware of the resistance in that in the area. Which is also why we think that the First River Road site is a great location. It's also, there's the, not directly right in Northampton. Um, it's an area that is accessible. It's also an area that people know where it is. Um, and it's had, it's gone through having composting there before. So it's has a lot of great qualities to it uh, that would make it a really great location for a composting operation. A, a, a properly managed composting operation shouldn't smell. Well, like I said, it yeah. will take open hearings. Right, right, yeah. Any other questions? I should like to say that this is uh, easily one of the most comprehensive presentations <laughs> we've had. <laughs> it's very impressive. And, it is. Um, and you, you, you know, the timing couldn't be more perfect. I think you're right. I think the, the impetus is for the community to with the closing of the landfill, there's more incentive to reduce the waste stream and more awareness about reducing the waste stream and also understanding how we separate and how we divide our garbage to um, to discourage large tr volume transportation out of the community. It also makes us take responsibility for the waste that we generate in a, in a very responsible way. And there's an end product. And, and I think to Councillor O'Donnell's point, you, you're offering a business plan, but not for your business. And I, I think what you've done is actually, you've done all the legwork for essentially somebody else. And that you don't see very often. And this is, this is a, a pretty impressive document to, to pass over to hand to someone who, who literally 
it's all, almost a turnkey operation based on the work that you've already done the groundwork. So thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. appreciate you sharing that with us today. Thank you. Thanks. Um, now we're up to uh, license and petitions. And the first thing up is uh, an application and a permit for a supervised display of fireworks. <laughs> Priscilla is here. Um, uh, this is the Northampton Family Fourth Committee Incorporated at uh, 40 Kai Street in Florence uh, are the applicants represented here by Priscilla. In Priscilla Ross is, uh, if you have any questions relative to this, uh, this permit, as you all know, this is, this has now become a, uh, a much anticipated annual event. It's fourth? Fifth. Fifth? This one. Uh, <laughs> so, but actually, Priscilla, if you want to speak to the, the application and all. Yes, and I just want to say thank you for having me here tonight. Um, and I did have a bow tie, red, white, and blue sparkly with, with that lit up, but my children told me it was undignified. Oh, I, I thought yeah. Councilor Adams stole it. <laughs> <laughs> so the Northampton Family Fourth Celebration is a free community event that's family focused. It's hosted by Look Park and the Northampton Family Fourth Committee. Um, which is made up of volunteers from the community as well as representatives from the rec department and look park um, we get sponsorship from local businesses and a lot of community members i was just back there typing in all the um, checks that we've received and it's amazing the support that we get from individuals in the community that give every single year so kudos to the to our community members as well as our businesses so the day is an event for the events a day for children and their families to come around five o'clock there are lots of games um, there's delicious food that's all uh, put on by local vendors and the uh, there's live music from local musicians the Florence Community Band plays as the fireworks shoot off around 923 um, from the park so you don't charge at all and, that, and that's June 27th. June um, 27th. And as as you said, at 9:15. And and the rain date is the 28th. 28th. Yes. Um, any questions of the petitioner? As you all know, this is a very successful event, and we have. I, I think the only incident that occurred was a bear licked um, an emergency, an EMT's hand at one point. That nothing to do with the event, but that was kind of surprising. Um, all those in favor of granting the license petition to authorize the use of uh, a fireworks display? Oh, yeah, accept a motion, actually, first. I yes. A motion. Motion's made and Second. seconded. I'm sorry, now we go. Now we can rush to the vote. Uh, all those in favor of granting this permit, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and thank, thank you for uh, staying and hearing about the budget and composting. <laughs> um, Let's see, we have uh, the annual license for trucks, and this is from Bill Willard Incorporated at 1010 Ryan Road, Florence. Uh, Joanne Warren is the petitioner. I'll accept a motion. Second. Any discussion on this? Um, do we see anything? <coughs> so, no discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Okay. The license is awarded by acclamation. Next up is a petition for second-hand dealer, uh, Rose River and Rain, LLC, uh, 22 Maplewood Shops. Melita Carnavalli is the petitioner. Um, I'll accept the motion. Make a motion. Second. Make to approve it. Any, any discussion? You have the application in your packet. All those in favor of granting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That petition is granted also by acclamation. So um, next up, approval of the minutes from uh, May 7th, 2015. Second. Made in second. Any discussion on the minutes from May 7th? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions? Okay. The minutes of uh, committee on rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances for April 13th, 2015. I'll accept a motion. Move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Those minutes are accepted. 
Now we have new appointments to the Human Rights Commission. This is to refer to the Committee on Rules, Orders, and Appointments and Ordinance. Uh, first up, we have Douglas Ross of 73 Barrett Street, term starting May 2015, expiring June 2018. And Joel Morse of 51 Vernon Street, a term also starting May 2015 and expiring 2018. I'll accept the motion to refer. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Those are referred. This is recommendations from the Committee on Rules, Ordinance, uh, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances uh, from the meeting of May 18th, a positive recommendation for all the candidates as follows. Uh, new appointments to the Northampton Housing Partnership. Michael Roy of 243 Park Hill Road, the term uh, starting April 2015, expiring June 2018. Alex Akers, um, or Akers, 32 Washington Place, the term to start April 2015, expiring June 2018. And Jim Rice, uh, 108 Coles Meadow Road, term uh, starting April 2015, expiring 2018. Um, we also, those are for the housing partnership. We also have new appointments to Transportation and Parking Commission. Uh, we have Krista Grenet, I apologize if I mispronounced her name, 492 uh, South Elm Street, the term starting May 2015, expiring June 2018. Uh, Council Murphy abstained from this vote regarding the recommendation for Ms. Granat. Um, and then next up is uh, Gary Hartwell, 419 Riverside Drive. Term starts May 2015, expires June 2018. And then for the Conservation Commission, Jack Finn of 57B King Street, and the term starting May 2015, expiring 2018. And then we also have a new appointment of Cruz Antonio Pagan or Pagan as the IT director for the city of Northampton. Um, I don't know how you guys want to break that down. Uh, if you want to move these as a group and take one out to yep. allow for Councillor Murphy's uh, exactly. abstention. Okay, so that would be Krista Granat. So I have to mispronounce her name over and over again. We'll remove that. <laughs> uh, we'll take that out. So the motion is. For all the others that I just described, uh, with that exception of Krista Granat, <laughs> Granat, boy, um, send your letters to City Hall. Uh, okay, so everyone's okay with that motion? Okay. Yes. Second it. Uh, yep, and that's Marion, second it. So, any discussion on these appointments? Um, I, I should note that uh, a rather significant appointment, of course, is uh, for the new IT director. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I gather you, yeah, Councilor Adams. There, there are no terms on on, on, direct, on directors of departments. I, I, no, I thought there was in the past, but uh, no, I don't know. I, I, that was, it was assumed it was by contractual agreement, but I don't know what the the extent of the contract is. And yes, I think if your question was, we did meet um, the the new uh, IT director nominee and had an opportunity to speak with him at the meeting. At the meeting. Well, as I said, these all came with positive recommendations. So, mm -hmm. any further discussion? That's discussion or questions. I conflated the two words. Disquations. Uh, okay. Um, actually, let's do a roll call on these. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Yes. Council yes. Council yes. Council Spector. Yes. Council Adams. Yes. Council Carney. Yes. Council Roy. Yes. Yes. Now we're going to spare Council Murphy tonight for uh, to have. Uh, we're going to. I, I would uh, move. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The motion for uh, I'll accept the. <laughs> yeah, I'll move the um, appointment of Krista Granat. Second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The motion's been made and seconded for. Krista Granat. Uh, any discussion? Uh, voice vote will be fine on this. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any objections? Oh, One abstention. Okay. And as I was saying, once again, we'll spare Councilor Murphy from presiding over the arduous Finance Committee meeting as there is no business pending. So uh, we'll just stay right in this meeting without going to recess. And we'll go on to the second reading of the Pulaski Park Renovation Fund. I'll accept the motion. Put that on the floor. Move to approve. Okay. Discussion. Further discussion. 
Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 That passes in second reading unanimously. Next up, we have uh, <coughs> a second reading for the Broadbrook Greenway Open Space Acquisition. I'll accept the motion. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this item? But a boom. Go ahead. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 That passes in second reading unanimously. Now we have the Conservation Fund for Open Space Preservation. This is also a second. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Hit it. Yes. 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 <coughs> yes. 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 Now we come to the famous Seth Thomas clock restoration. Uh, this is the second reading. I'll accept the motion. Proof. Motions are made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion on this? Let's hope we actually see this. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. 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 Carney? Yes. 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 Yes.
uh, the, the representative branch, uh, we, 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 we do that. So I think that was the, the nature yes. of this request on that. Yep. So the amendments made and seconded. Any further discussion on that item? All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Get another amendment? Yes. Um, section 4, exemptions. I would like to suggest an amendment uh, 4.3, which would read, thin film, single-use plastic bags under 3 mils purchased prior to April 1st, 2015 and used before July 1st, 2018. That's a motion. Second. You want to discuss that now? Yeah. Oh, Council Spector. The reason for that is we heard from at least one business owner, and I'm sure there are others, who have already purchased bags. Many of these bags are do have their names on them and other things that can't be used for other purposes. And they requested and even support this, but they're saying we would like, we request that we be able to use the bags we currently have because it seems kind of environmentally foolish just to get rid of all those as well and it made sense to us so we wanted to extend that deadline from the initial deadline we had we didn't realize that businesses some of them might buy bags for years in the future so any questions or discussion on the amendment all those in favor of the amendment please say aye aye, aye. any opposed any abstentions all right the amendment passes any more amendments well set we're back to the order uh, any discussion on the order as amended? Roll call, please. As amended. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. The order passes in second reading unanimously. Uh, congratulations to the two sponsors who I know have worked on this for a very long time. So good on you. And I should also point out the Youth Commission. The youth commission the youth yes. And uh, Jonathan Goldman actually was uh, a strong leader in that as well. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I don't know who made bets tonight, but um, the, I have no updates beyond the Memorial Day Parade and hope to see you there. There's no information requests uh, relative to Charter Provision 2-7. There's no new business. I will accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much.